subtracting fractions. So you can see here we have negative 11 over 12 plus 5 over 12. Whenever we're adding or subtracting fractions, you have to have a common denominator. Okay? That means the bottom numbers have to be the same. And you can see here we have we have a common denominator already. So to add the fractions, we can combine the numerators and put it all over the common denominator. So here we have negative 11 plus 5 and that's all over the common denominator 12. So that gives us negative 6 over 12 and then the, the 6 over 12 reduces so we're, we end up with negative one half and there's our answer. Let's look at another one. We have a common denominator already AB so we can combine the numerators 8 plus 3 all over the common denominator AB. So we 8 plus 3 is 11 over AB. There's our answer. Let's take a look at another one. You can see here we don't have a common denominator. So we need to find a common denominator of three and, between 3 and 6. So what we're looking for is the smallest number that 3 and 6 will divide into evenly. And you can see that the common denominator would be 6 because 3 goes into 6 two times and 6 goes into 6 one time. So we have a common denominator of 6. Now we look at this denominator here, the 3. What do we have to multiply to 3 to get the common denominator? Well, that would be 2. So since we have to multiply this denominator by 2, we have to also multiply the numerator by 2. So that would give us 4. Now, what do we have to multiply to this denominator to get the common denominator? Well, that would be 1. So we have to multiply the numerator by 1. So 1 times 1 gives us 1. Now that we have a common denominator, we can combine the numerators so that's 4 plus 1 over 6 equals 5 over 6. And there's our answer. Let's take a look at another one. <clears throat> we have 3 minus 4 fifths. Now, let's go ahead and write the 3 as 3 over 1, make it look like a fraction. Now, let's get a common denominator common denominator is going to be 5. So what do we have to multiply to this denominator to get the common denominator? Well that would be 5. So we have to multiply the numerator by 5. So that would be 3 times 5 gives us 15. And then what do we have to multiply to this denominator to get the common denominator? Well, that would be 1. So we multiply the numerator by 1. So 4 times 1 is 4. So we can combine the numerator 5, 15 minus 4 over the common denominator 5. So that's going to give us 11 over. Five. Let's take a look at this one. We've got negative 5 over 12 plus 9 over 16. So what's the common denominator? <clears throat> well, the common denominator is uh, 48. But this might be kind of tough to see. So how would we find the common denominator? if we can't see it like we did in these two problems. Well, 
what we want to do is we want to write 12 and 16 as a product of prime numbers. So we can start out by writing 12 is 2 times 6 and 6 is 2 times 3. So 12 would be 2 times 2 times 3. And then 16 would be 2 times 8, 2 times 4, and then 2 times 2. So 16 written as a product of prime numbers is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So the least common denominator, what we do is we look at each different factor here. Okay, So let's look at the 2 first. Here the 2 appears 1, 2 times. Here the 2 appears 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So it appears twice here, 4 times here. The most number of times it appears in one of them is 4. So that's how many times we use it. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Then we look at the 3. Here it appears once. Here it appears 0. The most number of times it appears is once. So that's how many times we use it. So this would be 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 3 is 48. So there's our common denominator. 48. So what do we have to multiply to this denominator to get the common denominator? Well, that would be 4. So we have to multiply the numerator by 4. So 4 times, and then we got the minus sign, so 4 times negative 5 is is negative 20 and then what do we multiply to this denominator to get our common denominator well that's 3 so we multiply the numerator by 3 <coughs> so 9 times 3 is 27 so we have negative 20 plus 27 over the common denominator 48 so this is 7 over 48. All right, let's take a look at some more. 5 over 6 minus h over 2. So we get a common denominator, and the common denominator is 6. So what do we multiply? to this denominator to get the common denominator. Well, that's 1. So we have 5 times 1 is 5. Then what do we multiply to this denominator to get the common denominator? Well, that's 3. So we multiply the numerator by 3. So three time, h times 3 is 3h. So we get 5 minus 3h over 6. Now the 5 and the 3h we can't combine those because they're not like terms. So this is our final answer. Alright, let's take, it, take a look at one more. We've got 7 over t plus 3 over 5. So we get a common denominator. Here the common denominator is 5t. So what do we have to multiply to this denominator to get the common denominator? Well, that would be 5. So 7 times 5 is 35. 
then what do we multiply to this denominator to get the common denominator? Well, that would be t. So 3 times t is 3t. So we have 35 plus 3t over the common denominator 5t. And 35 and 3t are not like terms, so we can't combine them. And there's our final answer. And that's it.